I am Allison Hermans, and I am the Director of Communications at Wildcare, and I have been here for 20 years. We admit between 3,500 and 4,000 ill, injured, and orphaned animals every year to the wildlife hospital, and they come from over 200 different species. We treat a lot of different types of animals in the wildlife hospital. The usual thing that happens is that a person will be in their backyard, or they'll be driving, or they'll be hiking, or they'll be, you know, just walking down the street, and they will see an injured or an orphaned animal. The next thing that usually happens is that they call Wild Cares Living with Wildlife Hotline, which is a great resource and is a tremendous uh, it, it, so, source of information for people that find injured and orphan animals. So you'll call Wild Cares Living with Wildlife Hotline and say, you know, I have this animal, it's on the ground, it doesn't seem to be able to get away from me, not sure what to do, and our team on the hotline will be able to tell you, okay, so it sounds like he needs to come into the wildlife hospital, let's have you get some gloves, let's have you get a box, let's have you get a towel, this is how you'll pick him up, and uh, then we'll give you instructions to bring him into the wildlife hospital. When he gets here, our team immediately goes into like emergency room protocols. So you wanna make sure the animal gets warm, you wanna make sure the animal gets hydration, you wanna make sure the animal is reducing the, an the animal's stress level is low. So that's always the first sort of emergency medical thing that happens in the med room. You identify the species, obviously, identify the sex if you can, uh, you know, do x-rays and blood work and a full, you know, ta tactile exam and, and kind of the same things that you would do if you went into an emergency room. But the thing that you run into at Wild Care is that our, pa our patients can't tell us what's wrong with them. They're not able to, you know, they're not articulating in any way, oh yeah, I was crossing the street and I got hit by a car. So it is uh, challenging for our team to make those diagnoses, but we have all of those medical tools to do. And you figure out what's wrong with the animal, you plan a medical, put together a medical plan for the animal's treatment, and you also put together a, uh, just a care treatment. So what the animal needs to eat, how much they need to eat, how much weight they should be gaining over the course of, you know, whatever period. And ultimately, and ideally, as the animal stays in care until he's made a full recovery. And then, yes, we release the animal back to the wild. And that's always the best part. It's the most amazing thing to be able to take an animal that you've seen come into the wildlife hospital sick and injured and in pain and, and awful, and then open up that box and just watch him fly free or watch him run free. It's, a, it's an amazing thing that, that happens when we're able to release a wildlife patient. We thought COVID was complicated, but yeah. HPAI is way more complicated. Exactly. So one of the main things that Wild Care is dealing with in 2023 that has made our lives very difficult is the advent of highly pathogenic avian influenza. We're lucky that it's not considered dangerous to people, but it is very dangerous and very deadly to birds of many different species.